Greetings, Gerbonauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is a tutorial on how to use the Kerbal Space Program version 1.0 resource model. Today we're going to cover scanning for it, collecting it, and converting it. The first thing we should do, though, is take a look at the parts that are involved in any of those steps. When it comes to scanning, we're going to be covering three scanners. First is the M700 Survey Scanner. Notice over here it says Orbital. That's important because that's the one we'll be using first. Then we're going to be using this one down here. It's the Surface Scanning Module. And third, we'll be switching over to the M4435 Narrowband Scanner. Once we've located resources, we are going to use the Drillomatic Mining Excavator, and we'll be storing that over in some tanks. We can either use this large holding tank for the ore, or this small holding tank. And ultimately, it's not going to do us any good unless we convert it. So last, we'll have the ISRU converter, and it will switch things either into liquid fuel, oxidizer, both at the same time, or monopropellant. So as I had said, step one is we need to scan for resources. And that means using the M700 survey scanner. And to make things easier on myself, I'm just going to use one of the stock ships, the ZMAP satellite launch kit, with just a couple modifications to get my scanner over to the moon. I've taken off the dish to make room for it, but you have to remember to keep some kind of communications device on this so that the data can be transmitted back to Kerbin after it has been collected. Next, we put a fairing on it to account for the new aerodynamic model, and then we launch it over to the moon. Getting to the moon is fairly easy. Just wait until it begins to rise right over the horizon on the ocean, then lift off and start pitching over relatively immediately and keep heading toward that horizon, basically pointing at the moon, traveling parallel across the ground. Release the fairing once you're high enough to be out of the atmosphere. And once the flight is looking good, then switch over to the map view because at this point, we need to make sure that we're intercepting. Keep pushing that orbit out until you see the conic sections change that indicate that you're going to intercept the moon. At that point, we can shut off our engines and get ready for a mid-course maneuver that's going to put us into a polar orbit. When taking this scanner anywhere, you have to keep in mind a few things. One, it has to be in a polar orbit. That allows the scanner over time to gather information about the entire surface, just like scanners work in real life. You're also going to want power, of course, a communications device, and it needs to be between a minimum and a maximum altitude based on where you're going. In the case of going to the moon, we need to keep it between 20 kilometers and 1,000 kilometers. Those distances are based on the radius of the body you're going to be orbiting, and in this case, the moon being 200 kilometers from center to surface. And a polar orbit is anything over 80 degrees in inclination. Once we have those parameters, we can open up the scanner and activate it. In the upper left, you're going to see that the data is being communicated back to Kerbin. Now there's a little bit of make-believe going on here. We're pretending that we're orbiting around that polar orbit over and over and over again until the entire surface has been scanned. But instead of forcing you to actually go through that time waiting for it, we're just going to pretend that it's been scanned. Once it reaches 100% scan, you're going to be able to go to this tab over here on the right, selecting the moon, selecting that tab, and accessing the resource overlay. If you don't see anything, make sure you click on OR. If you still don't see anything, make sure that you have your cutoff set at a percentage that will make things show up. I just put mine down to 0%, making everything show up. You may also want to change the color or the style. I like the style where the ground all changes to a sort of solid texture with different gradients of color. And as for the color, I like the one that goes from green to red. It represents a heat map of how much resources there are. Green means not much, and red means bountiful. Now the scan we just did is extremely rough. The map information is essentially just a fuzzy gradient interpolating color over a very few number of points. And if we want to get detailed information, we need to do a ground scan. We need to land something on the surface using this surface scanning module. Click on that and activate it, telling it to scan the surface. The OR reading will turn from saying average 
to not showing average and actually having a percentage. That is the actual percentage at the location of the scanner. This will have unlocked the entire biome where you happen to be at that moment. If you want to unlock other biomes, you need to drive to them and activate the scanner in them. One activation per biome will unlock it. So if you just go to each one, one time each and activate, you can get detailed information for the entire planet. After that, we need to switch to the narrowband scanner if we want to find out where the nearby best concentration is. Activating the narrowband scanner will give you a GUI. You can refresh it anytime you like, and as you mouse over it, it will give you coordinates of where the resources are and how much there is at that location. Values range from 1 to 15%, so anything in the 10 to 15 is going to be tremendous. As you move the mouse around the GUI for the narrowband scanner and locate the percentage that you want, you can then start driving in that direction so that you can plant a flag or something for future reference for landers that might come with a drill or your refinery that's going to do the conversion. If you want to put the narrowband scanner on something that flies around, that works too. It just has a maximum altitude of 500 kilometers, so keep that in mind. But it could be useful if you're flying in an airplane or something somewhere with an atmosphere, Eve, Duna, Lathe. Looking for the higher concentrations, refreshing every now and then until you find one. You could land there, plant a flag, and then fly back to base. Come back later with the drill and gather up some of the resources. In my case, I happened to land on a location that was 9%, but by mousing over the GUI, I'd found one that was more than 10. So I'm driving over there now, and once I get there, I'll be planting a flag at that spot. As we zoom out the map here and take a look, you can see that on my mini-map, the three craters that we can see right here are showing up, and I can see that the concentration is just above those, so that's going to put it right about here. So that's where we're driving, and I will just fast forward until we get to that location. Alrighty, we've made it to the higher concentration point, so it's time to jump out and plant a flag so that I can come back here later anytime I want and know where to go. Don't mind that lack of engine, we might have had a little mishap on the way over here. I'm sure it won't affect our takeoff at all. I checked the ground scanner there one more time and sure enough we're on a 10% concentration. So this whole process of determining the ground truth of where the high concentrations really are after doing a rough orbital scan, this is where the gameplay is. This is what's going to make it fun. We have to get down there on the ground and find the truth before we can truly be efficient with our collection. Oh, and hey, look at that. Just like I predicted, no problems at all lifting off with the missing engine and getting home. <sighs> okay. I guess when we come with the drill, we're going to have to bring it along as a rescue mission. Okay, we have a vessel. It has the Drillomatic Mining Excavator on it. Found under the Utility tab and under the Fuel Tanks tab, we have brought along some large holding tanks. By using the flag in the crash site, we have our target and we're coming down in that location. Once we get to the ground, we'll activate the drills. Now obviously those drill bits need to be able to penetrate down into whatever surface it is that you're going to be collecting from. We can collect from moons, we can collect from asteroids, you name it. Based on the concentration where we are, we're going to bring in a certain amount per second. Keep in mind this uses a lot of power. If you don't pack enough, like me, then maybe your drills won't function. Like in this case, only one of mine is going because I only have enough power for one. Oh well. The final step is the refining. We talked about it earlier. We can use the ISRU converter to convert the ore into liquid fuel or oxidizer or both at the same time or monopropellant, whatever you want. So imagine we have ourselves a moon base here. We have some storage tanks full of ore. We have a large fuel tank that's empty that we can fill up once we start converting. A bunch of solar panels so that we can get the power we need in order to power the converter. Activate it and away it goes. Filling up that fuel tank. Well that's going to do it Kerbinauts. Until next time, I will see you later.